Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a moment that our life is about to change. Truly. Truly. I'll not waste our time. My heart is really burning. Like the psalmist, my heart is inditing a good matter. He says, Yea, I speak of excellent things. He says, My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I pray that God will grant us grace. In one minute, I'd like you to cry. And ask the Lord for a definite encounter. Please pray. Please pray. Whether you're inside, whether you're outside, following online, please pray. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, you are the only one who is able to lift and bless and turn our lives around here at this awesome assembly. In the presence of your people, we cry that you give us visitations. This final session we have together, let it be life-altering. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, let your word come with fire. Let it come to transform. Our hearts are open. We are malleable. Change us. Transform us. In the name of Jesus, let us leave this service confident, knowing that we're done with poverty forever. We give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. On your way to your seat, please help me celebrate Pastor and his dear wife. Thank you. Thank you. Are we ready? Amen. Please be seated. Let's get to work. Jesus, be praised. We spoke about the spiritual laws of wealth and prosperity for those of you who are just coming. Um, sorry, we may not be able to go back to discuss, but we are now discussing the kingdom laws, the spiritual laws for wealth and abundance and physical laws together form the kingdom laws the first of them we started considering yesterday was the law of absolute surrender and then the law of the tithe or the law of tithing the first service we also dealt with the law of seed time and harvest all of the givings and the platforms that come under this law and then we spoke about the return channels that there are real return channels number one is favor favor with both men and god luke 2 52 and jesus increased the bible says in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with men you need favor with men also 
if you have favor with god alone you will have encounters you will see angels but you will still be suffering on earth you need favor with men praise the name of the lord if jesus didn't have favor with men he would have been arrested for carrying somebody's donkey and using it for a triumphant entry praise the name of the lord and then we spoke about wisdom wisdom and then number three the blessing activated upon your life now for many people and this has been a very big challenge in the body of christ usually this is where we stop as powerful as it is so we teach people to love god pay your tithe give and then when people begin to practice this miracles begin to happen testimonies wow a door just opened for me someone who forgot about me just remembered me gave me five hundred thousand, a million that's wonderful but you cannot be transgenerational that way i told you that these spiritual laws you see um let me say something and it's it's, it's an admission the way god blesses ministers of the gospel men and women of god is slightly different from the general way he increases people there is a levitical advantage we have by reason of priesthood are you getting what i'm saying even though it is still value but i can pray for someone now and god will lift him and he can buy me a car and give me a house you see if you are not me and you are not preaching that template may not be easily available for you so you have to learn god's defined patterns not the exceptions most times what we teach are the exceptions so you find out that the individual now who does not have a mic to talk to anybody or prophesy to anybody does not have anybody who would just arbitrarily give you a car and a house so you must learn how to build one are we together now yes the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of resources but then just because the resources have arrived does not necessarily mean that you can perpetuate wealth this is what business people and captains of industry have observed for many years they have spoken and said pastors and men of god we respect what you have been teaching but we think something is incomplete in your theology of wealth as much as you have spoken about surrender as much as you have spoken about tithing as much as you have spoken about giving just merely giving and merely tithing will not arbitrarily make people wealthy transgenerationally spiritually the engraving will be there but in reality and in experience you may never have that and so thank god for a platform like this that creates the balance are we together now so what you are about to learn are the principles these these are principles that are consistent with scripture but i want you to open up your hearts to learn them because in addition to what you learned yesterday and in the first service and the many more that you'll be learning there is nobody who will truly teach you the kingdom's way of wealth and ignore these truths they are not opinions they are the precepts there are not many ways there is the way hallelujah are we blessed so let's look at the natural laws of wealth and abundance i don't know how many of them we can cover but we'll hopefully just touch one or two and then pray the day the lord grants us another opportunity i'm sure that the lord would use me or any of his servants and grant us grace hallelujah natural laws natural does not mean they don't have the power of god no they're just that these are laws that are applicable to all men the spiritual laws give us an edge and an advantage because we're in christ but these natural laws are principles 
that anyone can apply you see the thing about the laws of god the natural laws especially is that you don't have to believe in god for them to work for you there is a dimension of god's power that is already invested in them even if an umbrella farms the crops will yield are we together now yes because a law was already invested in the earth that it should produce and so i pray that god will grant us grace the first law and this is one of the most powerful one of the most powerful natural laws that you will ever be taught about wealth and abundance is called the law of the mind the law of the mind the law of the mind this is a very fundamental financial law remember i told you yesterday that years ago in my quest to learn about finance i stumbled across books i have studied the forbes list of 100 billionaires one by one every one of them you know most times people think men of god don't know anything about money that all we're doing is just fasting and praying we have serious people and then because i also don't want to be poor we've agreed that poverty is very evil and bad don't believe it don't accept it not for you not for your children there is no blessing in it believe me i've had the privilege of studying materials of very successful people in a quest to understand and foolishly every time i saw them talk about the traits and the mindsets that made for wealth i thought they were just deceiving people i was really sad because i thought you just tell me okay this is a book what business are you doing what job do you have go straight to the point i said you don't have that time to you write a 240 page book all talking about how to think what in the world is that but i didn't know what i know now but thank god i still know it now all the same and i'm praying that as i share with you this truth that god will grant you the grace to really really understand the mind is a powerful miracle a powerful miracle that god gave man you cannot sustainably be wealthy if you do not possess the requisite level of belief systems please listen there is a set of beliefs that make for wealth there is a set of beliefs that make for poverty in fact the reason why the law is this i started talking about it yesterday the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe so everybody believes and what you believe will attract physical things to come to you trouble tragedy failure something about your belief system is attracting them if you are tired of them you don't drive them away they will remain provided the belief system is there what you do is to change the belief system and then they will go with that belief system now there are many wrong belief systems the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become so he is you already are your thoughts literally literally your belief systems create your possibilities and create your realities this is not some scientology this is the word of god the bible says let this mind be in you jesus did not just carry a healthy spirit he carried a healthy belief system there was a belief system that made for the signs and wonders there was a belief system that made him to build something and conquer the whole world in three years he says permit that mindset to be in you which was also in christ jesus hallelujah the journey 
one of the hardest assignments of the holy spirit if i would use that expression in the life of the believer is convincing you to leave your current thinking your current mindset and adopt a superior one because you see we have built a system of comfort around our current thinking and every time the challenge comes to transit is usually uncomfortable so the holy spirit has to continue to help us through the world to engage in strategic transformation not just new information information that is superior and sustains the ability to change our lives you are not changed until your mind changes watch this i i gave this example many years ago while i was teaching on a financial series you notice that someone can wear a nice cloth beautiful cloth say a white shirt and that person may be with that shirt for one year and you will still see it looking new carry that same shirt and give someone who is running around the street in two weeks the mindset of that person will start speaking on the shirt the same shirt someone wore many times we complain and we say a ceo is receiving one million per month and not doing anything we say under ac with juices and all kinds of things and then we complain that there is a security man at the gate and is receiving thirty thousand. it's unfair here is my proposal switch them take the ceo to the gate and take the gate man to the office let me attempt to describe for you what will happen the first thing the gate man will do is to steal as soon as he lands there the shock he knows that he will not be there for a long time he's already aware so the first thing he will do is he will not place value on the files because information is unnecessary for him he will never open the laptop or he will be thinking of selling the laptop not opening to find out what is there he will check quickly if there's physical cash there are we together he will not collect the phone numbers and the contacts there they mean nothing to him he wants to sell the phone the owner whoever he sells the phone to can delete the contacts because to him the phone is richer than the contacts are you seeing now i'm describing for you what will happen he will open the fridge and eat and eat even when he's full and steal everything and two three days the office will start looking like his mindset dirty unkept everything scattered disorganized now let's go to our ceo who is at the gate the first thing the ceo will do is how can i automate this gate because i can't keep pushing like that he will sit down the first thing he's at the gate and then his character of courtesy will make the people to not need to go to the office again they will start stopping at the gate because their problems will be solved there so the man collecting the one million was not the ceo it was the mindset the man collecting the 30,000 was not the security man. It was the mindset. Come. Let's assume that this gentleman is an armed robber. The moment you catch this man stealing and you shoot him, it is not an armed robber that is on the ground. It's a dead body. So who was really the armed robber? There was a thinking that convinced him that you have to steal to get now assuming you preach this man comes to a church like this and suddenly you preach to him and he gives his life to christ the same person who was once an arm robber now becomes a man of god the body did not change what change now look with me a naive young man who just gets admission to study mbbs confused and yet believes that one day he'll be called a doctor they never change the body they may not even change the cloth they pass him through a system and after six seven years his name changes immediately because a belief system was given to him so the millionaire is not the body the millionaire is the mindset the poor man is not the body the poor man is the mindset as he thinketh in his heart 
something that has refused to leave you is there in honor of your mindset the pain the disappointment there is something about your belief system that drives good people from your life it's not just everybody hates me no you may be well intentioned but you must be schooled and mentored and reoriented are we together have you noticed that as you rise higher and higher the executive cadre, the people are more cautious more understanding lower down the chain you find people shouting what what do you, do you think it's just because i'm working here i'm this and that and that and then someone comes out who is the head of operations all right sorry we're really sorry okay that's okay let me talk to the person and they know immediately that this is a senior executive he doesn't have to say it he doesn't have to wear anything his mindset immediately shows the difference between him and the rest and he invites that one to the office and he's talking could it be that the reason why things are not working is because there are belief systems we have sustained are we together now thank you now let's examine very quickly a few belief systems i'm going to be very fast forgive me i will give you very quickly four reasons why so many people are poor are you ready number one they have not decided to be wealthy on the one underline the word decided many people are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy they wish to be wealthy they hate poverty they talk about prosperity but they have not decided to be wealthy the difference between a wish and a decision is that a decision is a determination to reach an end with the awareness of the consequences that it will take are we together one day go better is just a sociological way saying a decision is a determination backed up by the willingness to pay the price until that willingness is there is not a decision many people have not decided they have decided to hate poverty they have decided to talk about their problems but they have not decided to be wealthy number two why are so many people poor they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clearly defined desire a clearly defined expectation pastor things are not working in my life what do you want i don't know i just know that things are not working you are not going to get it that way imagine a man entering a car and he just kicks it and starts running where are you going to say just keep watching have you climbed a bike going somewhere and then the bike man claimed that he knew where he was going Oh, do you know this place? Ah, I know it. And then later on, you find out that he's been going around an area for a long time. So I thought you said you know it. So, well, uh, at the last time, I don't know if he's that. I think we missed somewhere. Yet the guy claimed he knew where he was going. It's amazing that for 99% of your journey, you never see your destination. Yet if you are sure of it, you will get there. There is no goal. For many of us, we have not set it as a goal. To be wealthy number three why are so many people poor they lack the understanding of the real formula for wealth and abundance oh there is a there is a real formula there is a science to wealth and abundance and many believers many well-intentioned well-meaning church people do not really know the formula we just know pieces of information that relate to wealth but they've not been sequentially and methodically arranged to produce prosperity the formula for wealth and abundance and then number four why are so many people poor lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty to the realm of wealth the inability to contend for transition the mental transition it will take to move from the realm of poverty to the realm of abundance is God helping us already now I'm, I'm working on our mindsets now there are five myths that surround the issue of prosperity and abundance 
there are five mindsets five major mindsets pastor that i have found out that most people who don't succeed they have those mindsets dangerous belief systems can we walk through them five very quickly number one the first belief system is that money and abundance is carnal is evil or is unnecessary and they get that scripture from first timothy chapter 6 and verse 10 money and abundance is carnal is evil and is unnecessary so in a bid to be holy or in a bid to love the lord they feel that i have to reject wealth and abundance and this is the scripture for the love of money is the root of all evil the bible never said money is the root of all evil it says for the love of money the word there is eros one of the translations of the word love eros eros means an ungodly affinity an attachment that is at the detriment of your relationship with god it says when you have that kind of affinity towards money it becomes the foundation for all kinds of evils are we together now materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials over your relationship with god there are poor people who are materialistic money and abundance is carnal if i ask all of you to shout the word rich you will be surprised how embarrassed you will be mentioning that word you are a christian or you are born again you've been praying in tongues for a long time i just say shout the word rich you will feel guilty almost to ask for forgiveness there is something there is a programming that has happened to us we associate wealth with a very very negative disposition number two very quickly what's the second myth that keeps people poor if god really wants me rich he will make me rich so we leave the responsibility to god and we get our backing from psalms 84 and verse 11 please pay attention if god really wants me rich he will make me rich so if i'm not rich it must be that god wants me this way and here's the scripture the bible says for the lord god is a son and a shield he will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So we use it as a justification. It is within his power to make great. Riches and wealth and honor are in his hands. So if God wants me to prosper, I'm sure he would prosper me. It was Bishop Oyedeko who said, Every Christianity that makes God entirely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a participatory role that you have to play in actualizing any divine promise in your life. Are we together? Myth number three. That tithing is the one and only key to abundance. It looks like a very sincere understanding, but it's a dangerous one. There are many people who believe that the only key to wealth and abundance is tithing. Tithing is the one and only key to abundance they say because of malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 that is a very destructive myth tithing is a foundational key like we've considered but in truth it is not the only key it is one of the many keys are we together very quickly number four and pay attention to this one because many many people africans nigerians are victims of this mindset here it is if all i have is a business idea and startup capital i will be rich oh dear i repeat if all i have is just an idea and capital i will be rich it's not exactly so business idea plus capital is not equal to abundance there are many other variables in that equation. Are we together? Yes. I remember someone who met her uncle years ago, harassing the man and trying to point to the man that he's been so insensitive to the needs of the family. And the man said, I know if I give you people money, you're not going to do anything. And he said, uncle, give us X, Y, Z amount and we'll never disturb you for the rest of your life. And the man, the man just laughed. And he gave them something small. 
he said if you can come back after two or was it two or three months and prove to me that you've used it well i will give you more guess what happened they never came back because chances are if they give you capital your mindset will not allow you to rest you first touch it then you borrow from it promising to return back then you get into trouble then you pass a restaurant and there's no self-control and you say what is there i can't be holding money like this and kill myself even god knows that you see that these are all the traits by the time you get home the money has divided into half then you will emotionally get up after listening to a message and carry the remaining and say you are sowing it and as good as that looks at the end of it you will go back and you will feel you will feel evil for what you have done mindsets it didn't work that means there is more to the equation let's discuss the last one the last one is called entitlement mentality oh dear nigerians entitlement mentality what is that the feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success the feeling that someone somewhere could be an uncle could be a friend could be your pastor could be your family members could be your relatives that somebody somewhere owes you success there are people who move around getting angry with uncles and aunties in nigeria if you prosper from a family where you are the only one who rises you have to pray for the rest to rise too because if you rise alone everybody will come and blackmail you i'm a stakeholder in that such confidence they harass you they make you feel guilty that's why people don't testify nobody will testify that the money they have been waiting for has arrived because they don't want trouble as soon as people are, are aware oh dear mindsets 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 let me show you something genesis 11 Genesis 11. We're going to read the first four or five verses. It was a revelation God gave me that changed my life, Pastor. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Please look up. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwelt there. Nimrod Kush now and his team. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Keep that scripture there. Now, let me explain to you what happened. Nimrod Kush, alongside his team, they came from the east to the land of China, intending to build a city and a tower, they said, whose top will reach the heavens. And the first thing he began to do was to market that idea. They had not started building. He started speaking to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to build. And the tower will reach the heavens. Let's see what happens in the realm of the spirit. Verse 4. He says, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach the heavens. And let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. Verse 5 now. The Bible says, and the Lord came down something was happening from earth that attracted there are not many times god came down to the earth remember in this story demons are not mentioned satan is not mentioned just men and their minds the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have already finished building they have not started building it yet but just because their minds were receiving that idea in the realm of the spirit god saw a structure already building understand this and he came to see it and he said as far as these people are they have conceived this as a reality the building is finished he had to scatter them physically this they begin to do the next verse says and they have one language and this they begin to do so physically they were about to start the project but in the realm of the spirit, it was finished. This is powerful. Everything is built twice. 
first in your mind and then physically if that thing is built in your mind already there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop it from manifesting please listen listen i always counsel people that rather than living a fake life trying to wear clothes that you are not yet ready for trying to you know fly a business class you're not ready for no don't worry don't worry about the body just let the mind go ahead your mind can be an usher when it gets there your mind will lead your body to that realm for sure are we together now yes every man you see while i was watching the the documentary of one of the men who will be coming to speak to you your pastor was just telling me a little about him and could you see the contrasting photos a young man who was playing looking dirty and tattered is the man now who owns a group of companies around the world what change not his body you could still identify his face the mind let me tell you transformation is a real miracle more than lifting someone from a wheelchair transformation is a miracle the miracle of the mind my life began to change when i found out that when you change in your mind everything around you changes now i want to demonstrate something i do it every time i'm teaching about the mind and i'm praying that if all we talk about is the mind that's that's still sufficient for this service because for many of us these business ideas investment just leave those things wealth is not pursued wealth primarily is attracted through your growth and transformation more than what you do it is who you are that attracts wealth listen again more than what you do it is who you are that attracts wealth life is dimensional and every level you rise to there are possibilities already designed by god to come to you let me give you an example how many of you know that if your pastor stands upstage here now and says i am hungry what do you think will happen to you as soon as you hear him say i am hungry you will begin to invent what can i cook for my pastor because the level god has lifted him should not allow him say i am hungry and remain hungry so now he's getting that blessing through growth it's not so much what you are doing the most powerful blessing in your journey to wealth is not the money itself it's what happens to you on the way it is greater than the money as any blessed man their real satisfaction is not naira and kobo the naira and kobo is just the receipt that you arrived well it is your transformation who you become the newer version of you is more superior than the business when you talk to wealthy people, when they are talking to you personally, they will not talk about their businesses. They will not talk about all those things. They will talk about their stories. They want to show you their transformation. Now I want to show you something. Many of you have watched videos where I demonstrated it. Let me do it one more time. Is that fine? Please let me have six people. Six well-dressed gentlemen. No, no, no. You sit down. Let the workers. Okay. Just a few people. Just come. Just stand three here. And then three here, please. May you never forget this example for the rest of your life. Stand this way, my friend. Just turn. You stand. Just turn, all of you facing me. You turn the same way. Yes. Now watch this. Ah, may someone see this and understand. Space yourselves a bit, guys. Watch this. Life is in levels. Everybody watch this, please. Life is in levels. You hold this. You hold this. Hold it carefully. You hold this. Don't mind my example. I'm, I, I'm insisting that you must understand. Are we together? Now, at every level in your life, watch this. Remember, these are the things. Lift everything you're holding, please. Remember, these are the things you want. Fame, cars, business, pounds, dollars. They are already a possibility. But every time they come to you, there is a version of you they are looking for. 
listen carefully it is not every version of you that can attract them so they keep coming and they don't meet you because the you they are looking for has not yet evolved listen carefully it looks like right now this is you standing here oh god why would my life change what is there about a car that you will not give me it's already in your destiny but the version of you it is looking for you have not evolved yet into it please listen carefully so what happens these are all the things how am i going to get a house how am i going to get money how am i going to get lifting don't worry that's none of your business the god who designed the system is intelligent enough save yourself the stress of thinking of how they will come they are already there everything you are looking for is also looking for you but it's not looking for this version of you please listen you came to church gentlemen please shift back a little here's what i want you to do for me every time i take a step forward come close to me too watch this i'm transforming my mind i know that one day i will meet these things so as i'm studying books and praying shake it lord i will not be a failure are you seeing this now i am growing what is happening to me as i am growing suddenly i begin to have some testimonies in my life what is suddenly happening in my business i'm beginning to meet a class of people my phone contact is changing it's a report card I didn't even know when some numbers were deleted from my phone. I didn't delete it intentionally. Very soon, my phone too will change, not just the contact. One day, by what you call coincidence, I will meet with a tailor who will start sewing properly for me. He was always there. My growth. Listen, come. A realm will come when you are in the middle of all this. The wealthy place. At your beck and call, you can pick them. They have now come close to you. Go back again, guys. Let's do it again. Let me show you where you are now. Every Sunday when you come to church, you may not know what is happening. Come. Sunday. Next week. Week after next. While you are praying in your room. While you are studying pastor's materials, this is what is happening. Foolish people will tell you you are still there in that one room. They do not know that your evolution is calling things to your life. Listen to me. Now watch this. Go back. Let me show you something. Let me show you what a fake life is. Stand here. A fake life is you have not been transformed to this realm, yet you want the result of that realm. So you will quickly save money and buy it. And the moment you buy it, your mind will interpret it as an error because your mind says you are possessing something that your growth should not have in your life coincidences will make that thing leave you you must return back to your real state this is a law this is the mystery behind this balloon success you see here and there suddenly someone just got five million and the guy is happy and in his mind he believes that his colleagues with all those who grew to that realm you know you have gotten to a realm where everything in your life also grows you cannot be in a business class i'm not insulting you don't feel bad you cannot be in a business class with a wristwatch of 2000 you are not yet there because when you really grow there everything grows also are we together you can't be driving a jeep and then parking to buy one gallon of fuel you are not there no true wealth is a product of being not doing but the people that do know they are god so knowledge first then they shall be then they shall do they shall be then they shall do focus on being more than doing this is why any business you does fails it's not always an attack the problem is a mindset if I wear a jean trouser, it's the same me. If I decide to wear Agbada, it's the same me. So no matter what business you switch to, if it's the same mindset running that business, it will still fail. The same way, if your mindset has transited, anything at all can bless you. Someone lay hands on your head 
and decree and declare lord i agree with you for my transformation i'm tired of holding on to age-long beliefs that keep me poor that keep me limited now i know that it's not just about doing business as important as that is it's about my transformation my growth hallelujah listen many years ago i was in one room one small room when the lord told me i would take you to the nations and i will bless you you will stand before kings one room and yet i agreed with him my body did not need to leave the room my mind since i can't get a visa let my mind go no immigration officer will stop it holy spirit hold that mind and let's go and when your mind goes there your mind returns back to tell your body that place exists let's go your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body are you getting what i'm saying now most of us feel stupid if they call you now and say what are you doing about your finances and you say i'm studying materials and i'm building most people will laugh at you and say sit down there and die don't go and look for something to do it's not always what to do it is your being first you do not get afraid take your pastor now and his wife take him to london take him to us give him six months he will reproduce this result because it did not come by chance it's a product of knowledge and enlightenment when you prosper just by doing you will be afraid of your result because you will suspect it will not last and you are right it won't last but if what you get is by growth everything around you does not make you afraid because even when it disappears you have the power to make it happen again this is why it will be easy for you to give if someone dash you money and they gave you one million if i come as a man of god and i say give me the one million will you agree you will look at me and say, I cast, I respect you, but I, I cast that spirit from you. But if you got it by knowledge and growth, you can give freely because you have the power to replenish. I'm not afraid of any result in my life today. I tell you sincerely, none of it came by luck. It can be reproduced a thousand times regardless of the geography. I'm sorry if I sound arrogant. It is true. If in 24 hours no one favors me, I will go for a retreat. At the level God has brought me now. Because I know 24 hours is too much. God brought you to church to shake you and to challenge you. Not just that you are mesmerized by this truth. Because some of you, you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't know where to start. Don't worry. You are learning the laws. Remember again. You are a man of God. You are moving around with invitation cards. I'm anointed. No. The fact that you have to tell people you are there as a man of God is a sign that something is wrong. You are a worker in church. This is how you start. While you are growing, this will start happening to you. Supernaturally, in your department, they will say lead prayer one day. Are you seeing now? When you lead that prayer, then one day, the pastor will say lead opening prayer in church and he will gather all your destiny helpers in front of you that day. But when you have worked on yourself, it becomes your season of appearance. The moment you say that God will cause someone to look at you and say, ah, what is it that you do? He said, well, God is helping me. He said, I have one youth fellowship. Would you come and just say hello to them? Don't despise them. Because that day, God will make the owner of an oil and gas company to come and just decide to join his children that day. Let me show you the mysteries of the lifting power of transformation. While God was training you, he never told you you will meet an oil and gas person. Your growth keeps drawing them. Save yourself the stress of knowing how it will happen. No, that's not your assignment. How is a burden that is bigger than you? Just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of how, who is with child, nor the way of the wind, the Bible says, so you do not know the ways of God. His ways are past finding. Leave that to his intelligence. Yours is to just trust. 
there are people god has brought to my life today i never how would i have met them growth you see when you are growing you are not the only one growing so all those who are growing like you there is a point you will meet the ceo that you are looking for is also growing you just keep growing forget about trying trying you are not alone the holy ghost is there helping you one day somewhere at the point of your growth there will be a collision it's no coincidence that we're meeting with your pastor today and his wife and preaching in the church here remember once upon a time this place was not here i was asking him yesterday and said how did you build this amazing place and when he told me the story i said there it is egypt they left egypt in one day but they carried egypt in their mind egypt kept causing trouble for them a journey of 40 days became 40 years because egypt would not leave them many of you have left your village but it's still with you many of you have left your pain but it's still with you many of you left yesterday but yesterday is still relieving itself in you you came to church this morning to say enough is enough some of you just you are waiting right now oh god capital are you seeing that not every delay is demonic god delayed your uncle from giving you that money until you hear this message otherwise you will waste that money the same way it happened last year again i know that all it takes in fact i know the mistake i made yesterday i'll correct it now and your mind is still in yesterday I am passionate about my transformation. I am passionate about my transformation. Jesus at age 12, when his colleagues were running around, causing trouble in the city, he was there engaging in transformation. By age 30, that gentleman was already ready to take the world. Hmm. Listen to me. Some of you are seated here right now. Nobody may know you, but let your mindset transit enough and one day you will see the people you used to admire bow their heads and say it's an honor to meet you and then you will tell the person do you know i desired seeing you brothers and sisters listen to me i know what i'm telling you the lord through your transformation you give god space to open up doors and do tremendous things in your life One more time. Let me show you your destiny. Are you willing to pay the price? Instead of buying clothes and living a fake life, buy the materials that transform you. Ah, I came to your house and all I see is just Gary. Take it with honor while you grow. Don't be embarrassed at your today. You will miss it soon. Don't rush seasons. And while you grow, Lord, I know the nations will come to bless me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I may come from a background where nothing is happening, but I trust your ways. I know I am rising. I know I came from a family where we never had a television, but Lord, I know. And you open your eyes one day and you are in the midst of blessings that will never be reversed again. Do you believe what I just shared with you? Listen to me. I give you an assignment focus on building your mind more than the job you do more than the business you do the real place of investment is your mind anything outside you don't trust it things are only secured when they are inside you <laughs> i don't trust anything outside me but what is in you Are we blessed? You have some money right now in your pocket. You have some money right now in your account. I know you have some properties for some of you. You have some businesses that are flourishing. I agree. I respect what you've done so far. But God is shifting us to realms. Realms beyond what you have seen. 
possibilities that will dumbfound you many of the people you are looking for today if you will pay the price for your growth i tell you a law was created and creation still respects that law when you grow that which is equivalent to your growth must come to you must come to you must come to you how many of you have thought of someone and then the person is just calling you because it's a law he didn't just think of you he didn't just call you there is more than happens in that happens in our world than the physical you have to believe this do you know why god is teaching us this so that you can defend your prosperity because we live in a nasty society that believes people are just lucky so when you come they just tell you how oh, you are lucky i'm sure they just favored you that son name is it the one that i know and you are even saying you learned any principle they just dash you money no you can make defense of the truth that you have that i, I was yes it's the grace of god but it's not by luck i can reproduce it again then you can raise others also literally lift people from ground up there is a science to abundance one of it Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.